Sometimes we may understand the harm in something and sometimes we will not understand the harm in something. But if Allah has declared it and you've learned it with sincerity and you are prepared to surrender to what Allah has said, believe me, the pleasure of Allah is close at hand. That is how you earn the pleasure of Allah. But if Allah has decreed something and we know he says in Surah Al-Ahzab, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ It is not for a believing male or female that when Allah and His Rasul have declared something, decreed something, that they feel they have a choice in that regard. If they feel they have a choice in that regard, they become further away from the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they can surrender, they will achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do you know the most beautiful aspect of Islam is that when we surrender to Allah's instruction, we will always lead a happier life. Every single time we will lead a happier life. So when there are rules and regulations, they are there in order to guide us to lead a better life in the dunya and to earn the akhirah. Let me give you an example of a school. When you have a top private school and you pay a lot of fees and you enter the school, they have lots of rules and regulations in order to discipline you, in order to build you as an individual, in order to be able to make you prepared for the life once you graduate from that particular college or school. So when you get to the top school, they want your uniform in a specific way, you dress in a specific way, your hair is in a specific way, your nails are in a specific way, you will stand up and greet in a specific way, you will not sit down if this happens and you will sit down if that happens and you need to do this and do that and this is the timing and if you are out for so long, you need this type of an excuse note and what have you. All the rules and regulations are there, far more than the ordinary school, but people go there and they call it, that's a top college. That's a top school, man. You know, the graduates from that college, the minute they open their mouths, you can tell this person's highly educated. But they suffered, they struggled, they paid fees. They went through, they endured, they did not question those rules and regulations because they wanted to reach the heights that the others who've graduated from the same college have reached. Why then when it comes to Islam, which is by far the greatest of all schools, subhanallah, if I can even call it that. We find ourselves wanting where Allah declares something. It's a rule and a regulation, but we want to question it. We want to ask about it. We want to say, no, look, we're allowed to ask about in order to learn, but to reject and to deny and to say no and to, to think you have a choice about it and to think that we can arrive at greater happiness, to think we can arrive at greater happiness based on something that will be against what Allah and His Rasul have stated. Wallahi, we would never be able to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, my brothers and sisters, as we draw close to Salatul Maghrib, it is important that I remind myself and yourselves that we are the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be returning to our Maker. We as Muslims are the luckiest of the lot. When we put our head down just now in Salatul Maghrib, may Allah grant us the ability to put it down. It is solely and only for the one who made me, no one else. That is why I put my head on the ground. This is the beauty of Islam. This is what is the, really that within me that I know for a fact I cannot have been doing something wrong. My head is on the ground for who? The one who made me. Who made me? Here, I owe, you, I owe it to you. I say, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Amazing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May He accept our salah and may He accept the gathering that we have here today. Inshallah, we will continue just after Salatul Maghrib by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Brothers and sisters, we continue from where we left off. We are speaking of the pleasure of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Remember, there are many ways of pleasing Allah سبحانه وتعالى and earning His pleasure. But primarily, if the core of the tree is not as firm as it should be. 
then we will not be able to build on that particular tree, nor will it grow with the correct type of branches and fruit. So therefore, it's important for us to know that the primary issue that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like we said at the beginning, we need to know what makes him unhappy. What is it that displeases Allah? Well, there is one very, very serious matter that sometimes, sadly, a lot of people do not like to talk about, yet it should be the most spoken about matter. Because if something displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should be aware of it. We should be knowing that this particular item is very serious. How can I earn the pleasure of Allah, claim to want to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through, for example, charities and being a good person and kind and so on, when my initial link with Allah is not even there. Allahu Akbar. So it's, for example, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes uh, the kuffar, for example, he says, regarding their deeds وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلْ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا We have granted them the recompense of their deeds already. So we have made them like that which would be an ash strewn all over. You see, if you have coupons for all your deeds, Say, for example, I have coupons for my deeds. Those coupons are going to be valid to be used in the Akhirah by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fact that I have them with me, Allah will grant me a status in the dunya as well. He will make things easy for me. But if I spend those coupons completely in the dunya, when I get to the Akhirah, what would have happened to all my deeds? I will be told you had them. They were very good deeds, but those coupons in return for that, we gave you something in the dunya. Now today, you have nothing with us. Because the link with Allah is not there. So this topic and this issue that we are talking about is known as the issue of shirk. Association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If anyone feels irked by that word, then there is something wrong with the heart. If anyone feels like they don't want to listen to anything connected to that word, then there is something wrong with the way we perceive our own maker. Because he says, <laughs> He says, Allah does not forgive the association of partnership with him. But besides that, he may forgive whatever else he would like to forgive, whatever he wants to forgive. So if a person dies in the condition of association of partnership with Allah, then even if they have many other good deeds, they are in very great danger to put it lightly. And this is why I said when I started this particular talk, that if we are sincerely searching for the method of sincerity, we will be able to be sincere correctly. Because sincerity with knowledge is true sincerity. But when someone is sincere with no knowledge, they may not be able to be sincere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us knowledge and sincerity. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, primarily, when we have a link directly with Allah, we worship none but Him. Like they say in the English language, come rain, come sunshine. We worship Allah alone, subhanallah. Rainy day or a good day, whatever day it is, I worship Allah alone. I will not turn to anything besides Allah. My act of worship is for Allah. My prayer is for Allah. My sacrifice is for Allah. My life is for Allah. My death is for Allah. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ This is an instruction. Muhammad ﷺ being instructed to utter. Say that indeed my prayer is for Allah. My sacrifice for Allah. My life, my death for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No partners does he have. So that is the prime method of earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, there are so many things that would earn the pleasure of Allah. To reach out to someone in need would earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
to be able to develop oneself internally would earn the pleasure of Allah. To get up at night when everyone is asleep and to cry to Allah, to engage in acts of worship, to read his book, to try and understand the book of Allah, to spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All this is part and parcel of trying to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.